Welcome to the Eric Brady Podcast, Series 1, Adolf Hitler, His Bombers and Me. Episode 18, Under the Rubble. Eric, you were telling us about the bombing of Sandhurst Road School on the 20th of January, 1943. Kitty had got down to the dining area. I, my position was fairly near the entrance. I, <clears throat> I saw her come in. Um, just as the teacher shouted to us to get under the tables and the bomb hit. And uh, I'd been excited up to that moment until I saw this school falling down on us. And then I realised what was happening. And uh, <clears throat> Ketty came running towards me and uh, all the rubble hit. Um, one lump, a uh, big chunk of rubble, fell on my left arm, which I was lying on my back and was somewhere above my head, and also hit my head and uh, knocked me out. And another lump of rubble hit my left ankle and smashed that. Um, rescuers immediately dashed out uh, from neighbouring houses and from all around. The bomb hit about 12.30 and as far as we can work out, I was finally dug out at 7.30 that evening. Partway through as darkness fell, uh, floodlights were brought up and torches and as more bombers came over that evening, which they did towards um, into London, uh, the floodlights had to be doused. And we believe that it was during that time when the main floodlights were uh, extinguished that I was among the children that was rescued. It was a pretty impossible job that those rescuers had trying to pull a mass of kids out from under rubble that was piled on top. Three lanes had been uh, driven into the wreckage and wreckage was handed out, passed along a line uh, and dumped elsewhere as they were trying to get through the uh, large amount because it was a three-storey school and so there was a lot of rubble above us of floorboards, ceilings, desks, roofing, rafters, all kinds of brickwork, all came down on top of us and all that lot had to be moved to get to us. So uh, the rescuers had to get through that, get through the plaster and the dust and everything else. And it was a pretty impossible job for them. And when they came to me, as far as we can work out, they'd have seen my smashed ankle. They'd have seen in the rubble that I was pinned down, but not necessarily where the rubble was actually lying on my left wrist. And so because of the nature of my injuries, we reckon that the rest was trying to pull me out of the wreckage not realising that my hand was so firmly pinned down. As a result, it was as though I was put on a, a rack, that medieval torture instrument, with the left wrist being pinned down and the rescuer trying to pull me out, perhaps thinking that I was just pinned down by my jacket. Anyway, it did uh, a lot of damage to my left arm my elbow was dislocated, top of my spine damaged, um, and uh, the nerves in the armpit uh, were stretched, have some broken, a lot were damaged, in, and it resulted in what's called a brachial plexus injury. I was eventually got out, taken on, on a stretcher to the nearby church hall, and that was being used as the first aid centre. Uh, the children that were taken there that were dead were put on one side behind a curtain. <clears throat> and the rest of us were taken in one or other of a fleet of ambulances uh, to hospitals nearby. 
I was taken to Lewisham Hospital, which is still standing. When my father came home from his day's work, my mother told him somehow she had got home and uh, said about the school and that we, both Kitty and I, were missing. And uh, he immediately got on his bike and came to the school, inquired there about us, and he was told that any injuries were taken straight from here to the hospital and we could be there. And uh, I was there. Kitty hadn't yet been rescued. And um, he went into a room where there were a number of other parents waiting because a doctor would come in every now and again and pin up two lists of names. One would be of the dead and the other would be of the injured. And then they would call out the names of the injured and uh, any parents there could go and have a preliminary talk uh, with the doctor. I had one talk with my father when uh, I'd come home from hospital and I wanted to see the school and um, my father agreed to take me when I kept on about it and he told me that um, the doctor said to him that if I lived, which was doubtful, then um, I would almost certainly be in a wheelchair for life. I'd have to be kept. And uh, that was partly because of my uh, physical injuries, but also because of this possible brain damage. And uh, he then uh, waited for Kitty and there would be a description of something like girl about 12 years of age wearing a brown dress or a clothes description and uh, my father thought one of those sounded a bit like Kitty so he went to the mortuary and tentatively identified um, this girl and then um, he went back home and told my mother and she said to me in the one conversation I had with her that he stood by the table, she was lying out on the settee and he, she said, gave it to me straight between the eyes, which he said the doctor had and said exactly what was wrong with me, that I was going to be permanently crippled and Kitty was dead. To buy your copy of Adolf Hitler, His Bombers and Me to read alongside the series, go to ericbradybooks.co.uk. The Eric Brady Podcast can be found on YouTube, podcast services and at ericbrady.blogspot.com.